name is Ryan Dietrich alongside my partner, Candace Allen. We are just about underway. This is going to be Reynoldsburg taking on Afrocentric. Powerhouse matchup, a matchup between two powerhouses. Today we just got done um, Taze Valley taking care of DeSales, 38 to 30. And we'll see if they, now oh, here you go. Starters real quick. Number five, Samara Thompson. That is number 11, Shawnee Little. Looks like number four, Jania Bowers, 21. Natalia Nelson, 24. Cameron Grant. That was Afrocentric. Now Reynoldsburg, number one, Malaya Collins. Number two, Aubrey Price. Number five, Simone Johnson, 14. Simone Holyfield in 15. Then I McDonald. The ladies, I love it. A lot of energy, dancing, vibing. Um, we're ready for a good one. Candace Parker, Candace Allen, I did it again. <laughs> the second time, like. I said Candace Allen before you sat down. So anyway, the, le compare, the legend compare me herself. To a legend, yep. like, I'll take it. The legend in herself. Tell us what we're in store for. I mean, we're in store for a really good game, like you said. The powerhouse that is Afrocentric. Everybody knows their history. The eight-time state champions, their coach, Janisha Anderson, won her first state championship last year. And, you know, for the luck of, or not luck of, nearly every other team, she brings everybody back nearly, except for one graduating senior. Um, so we should see a really good game. Reynoldsburg is up and coming. Uh, has nice athletic players. I'll call a few of them out as the game gets started, but we should see a really, really good game. All right, Johnson on the tip. Reynoldsburg. Call him Berg there in the white uniforms. The Berg. The pink trim. Looking sharp, and then the Afrocentric, the Nubians in the black. Looney's as Collins takes the mid-range floater from the middle of the paint. Ooh, wide open lane. Nelson a little late on the drive there. She pulls it back out. Let's rip. Off the mark at the three. Battle at the boards. Thompson pokes one away. Out of bounds underneath. We got a foul on the play. Foul's on number 15 from Reynoldsburg. McDonald, the senior. And that's something that Reynoldsburg is going to have to watch out for. There's been a couple of games this season where McDonald has gotten in early foul trouble. She's one of their most aggressive players and she kind of sets the tone for the team so she needs to watch out on the fouls. Good bucket there from Thompson. First points of the afternoon. After Central bringing a little full court pressure. And if you saw that play Sam Thompson put all of that left shoulder into her defensive player but you like that aggressive play to start out. All right bird pressure up the floor Johnson with the ball. Leia Collins, not afraid to shoot it. Nelson on the board. Good sneak from behind by Holyfield. All right, Reynoldsburg trying to deal with that pressure from the Nubians. Pressure all the way out on the perimeter. Hands in the face, very active on the defensive side. Absolutely, and what the Berg is gonna have to do is keep moving the basketball. Great pass. Good entry pass, foul on the play. That looks like Nelson. Yep, Natalia Nelson, that's her first. The senior, and Denai McDonald, the senior at the line. Shoot two. Yeah, Denia McDonald is a senior. She's extraordinarily talented and aggressive. She has some nice skills. So for Reynoldsburg to really pick off a win on Afro Citrix, she's going to have to have a really big game. But it's it's what I call controlled aggression. If she plays controlled, um, Reynoldsburg is going to be playing at their best. All right, knocks down the first one. Can't get the second good effort on the boards. Deanna Carter, pass it, Sam Johnson can't make it. 
I will say to start off compared to our game yesterday, these young ladies are letting the ball fly. <laughs> It's been a good afternoon of basketball here live from Ohio Dominican. Great to be back in the facilities here. And you see with the ball here, Natalia Nelson, she is a DePaul commit. Extraordinarily talented. There you see her up strong. Yeah, she dishes it to Grant. Cameron Grant just finds it right back to her. Good work down low from Nelson. Reynoldsburg breaks the press. Nice bucket there from far corner. Aubrey Price, the junior, getting in a little action. Good answer from Afrocentric. That was Janiah Bowers. If there's a story about that young woman as a freshman, she scored 17 points in the first half in a state championship game. When she won her first state title as a freshman. That's what kind of player number four Janiah Bowers is. Yikes. Well, some, you know, some veteran experience at, you hey, know, the sophomore I'm level. Veteran as a sophomore. I like to see that. She put on an incredible performance last year. And some pressure from Reynoldsburg on the defense. A little stifling Afrocentric at the moment. Working from the elbow. Nice move from Cameron Grant. And they stay with it. Shawnee Little just hassling the inbounder. Knocks it out of bounds. So they're going to have to reset. Yeah, and Cameron Grant, who made that last shot, asked me to head off the floor, number 24. She missed all of last season with a knee injury. So not only does there you see her. Not only does Cam Grant come back to a state championship winning team, um, she comes back healthy. And this Appleton team is off and running in the early going. Yeah, full 60 second timeout taken by Reynoldsburg there as they're down four. Just three minutes into the first one. And you can probably hear it on the camera. The Nubian cheerleaders. They brought their cheerleaders out. I did speak with the Reynoldsburg coach before this game. She tried to say she should have made a call to have the Reynoldsburg cheerleaders out, but Reynoldsburg did have a game last night. They played Dublin Kaufman in a really tight one-point win, so I think she gave her cheerleaders a break, but not the players. Um, so that's why you don't see the Reynoldsburg cheerleaders, but I did mention to the coach she did want them out here. Never a day off, right? Never a day off. But a back-to-back -back in high school. That's tough. They're kids, though. Yep. I mean, right. They can <laughs> handle it. <laughs> Nothing to it. And, yeah, pretty full house. This is a big gym. A lot of fans in the building. And that's Reynoldsburg coming out of the timeout. See if they've got drawn up. Sam Johnson. Yes. Good. Simone Johnson is a state champion herself. In 2022, she was a part of that Division I state championship team at Reynoldsburg, so she has tons of experience. Good defense from Nelson. Steals it, takes it. Full court gets the bucket. Pumped up is Afrocentric. Good, good look at the replay. Seeing the pressure and the reaction off of that made bucket. Natalia Nelson, the thing about her, when she gets to the basket, she's nearly unstoppable in high school basketball. She puts her head down. She finishes, finishes extremely well around the basket. So Natalia Nelson, one thing Brindlesburg uh, is going to have to do is slow her down, slow her penetration down. Great pass. Denia McDonald working off the assist. Great pass by Holyfield. A little seal on the inside. Good find. That's one way to beat pressure is to pass through it. And getting it done on the defensive end is McDonald. Pokes it out of bounds. It'll stay after center ball. And I talked to, again, the Reynoldsburg coach, Marche Dodson, before the game, and she wants her players to play hard and to play disciplined. And I think early on we've seen Reynoldsburg start to match the intensity that Afrocentric has came out with. Number one, Ashton Winfrey inbounds it. 
to Sam Thompson, and she gets called for the player control foul. So it's going to be a turnover. Reynolds, we're going to take the possession. That'll be Thompson's first foul. Now, can I get on my soapbox a little bit? <laughs> I think they've called too many fouls. <laughs> The last game, they let, them, they let the whistle go. They so. let them play. Yep. I, you know, I'm, I'm not a proponent of magnitude of fouls. We have four already. Great pass. That's Aubrey Price for Reynoldsburg working the baseline. Couldn't finish. Down inside, Janiah Bowers. Good footwork. McDonald on the block. Called. I think it's going to be on Janiah McDonald. Yeah. Should be her second personal. Probably going to get a substitution there. And it looks like checking in for Reynolds Burgundy, number 24, Jayla Watley. I think. After Bowers. I do down know that's, first. that's Taylor Claiborne. They changed her number. Oh, okay. Good catch there, Candace. Number 24 in your program if you're watching. Is actually going to be Taylor Claiborne. And that's one thing mentioning for Reynoldsburg and Denia McDonald. She has a propensity to get early fouls. And for Reynoldsburg to be where they need to get to, she has to stay out of foul trouble. So she'll take a break, and hopefully in the second quarter she can come back and play a little bit more disciplined. Aubrey Price with Howell all over. Excuse me, Grant. That was Cam Grant. Giving her the business. Kicks it out of bounds. It'll stay Reynoldsburg ball. We got 3.34 to play. Berg down seven. Price, a little hesitation, drives. Finds her teammate wide open. Good look from Simone. Holyfield, but can't convert. Quickly the other way. Great find. Denia Bowers threads the needle. Nelson gets hacked on the uptake. Ah, just, yep, she's going to the line. Shooting two, looks like the foul's on. Number two, Aubrey Price. I think that's her first. And once again, enough cannot be said about Natia Nelson, the DePaul commit. When she gets her head down and goes to the basket, she is nearly unstoppable. The message from Reynoldsburg is to keep her out of the paint. Yep, hard to do it so far as Nelson knocks in that other one. And excuse me, that foul was on Malaya Collins for second. Good answer from Reynoldsburg. Trailing seven, three to go. Good pressure all the way out in half court. Good work inside. Afrocentric moving the ball around. Right wing just off the mark. Yeah, that was a foul. Claiborne just had her arm sitting on her back. She was almost there, but in those situations, you have to get in position to box out. All right, out of bounds. For Afrocentric, Janiah Bowers. Got Nelson Grant, Winfrey, and Thompson on the floor as they make that box around the lane. And as we need to mention, we were on a call uh, last tournament in the Battle of the 7-4-0. There is a new rule yep. in high school basketball, middle of high school basketball. There is no more one and one After a team's fifth foul, the team will go into bonus free throws. So that's what you're yeah. seeing now is Afrocentric will now go to the line for two shots. So no more one and one in high school basketball. Yep, takes place each quarter. Yeah, there's a rule down there in the corner for you. The update, good catch as. Gets to the line, knocks down the first one, that's Cameron Grant. But what a luxury to have Cameron Grant back. Like I said, she was out all of last year with an injury, but to come back to an already state championship winning team, she knows the program, she knows the mission. It just makes this Afrocentric team very, very dangerous. She knocks them both down. Good defense from Winfrey. 
Reynoldsburg having trouble getting any sort of separation in this Afrocentric defense. Just a lot of length. Giving them fits right on cue. Nelson knocks it out of bounds. Yeah, it looks like that Reynoldsburg office, they're running a motion offense of just trying to keep the players moving. Um, but at some point, one of their guards are going to have to dribble, penetrate, and dish it out. Or do exactly that. So you yep. got to finish those shots. Yeah, Aubrey Price misses it from point blank range. And Afrocentric's bringing it up as they just kind of keep creeping away. Nine point lead. We're about the two minute mark. Yeah, just a little sloppy. Nelson saves it though. Time on the floor. <laughs> and Coach Anderson is like, wait a minute. The emphatic timeout <laughs> from Coach Anderson over there. Wait a minute. This will probably be a good time to talk about Coach Anderson. I was able to speak with her a little bit before the game. Everybody knows the history with Afrocentric, eight state championships. I asked her, what was, like, what is it having that kind of pressure coming in year in and year out? And everybody expects you to be good. We think about that in collegiate sports and the pros, but here's a high school team that is expected to win every year. And she just says that she has non-negotiables and the players who come into her program, they are to follow all of her non-negotiables. Um, they have a rich history and they have high expectations. So every player knows what they need to do when they get to this program. And as their success has, has identified, all of them have followed it. So it's just a testament of what was built at Afrocentric over the years and which she was a part of and now um, continuing. As Sam Thompson working it in off the timeout. Coach Nelson drew up here, a little drive and kick. Good block from the bird. And Reynoldsburg came back in a 2-3 zone. I don't think Coach Nelson was expecting that. Uh -uh. Playborn seals down low, but Price lets one rip, boarded. Ah, can't get a hold of it. Deanna Carter on the rebound. Tried to get a jump ball. One thing I can say, regardless of, of how the score looks going off, Reynoldsburg is getting some really, really good looks. Um, at some point, the shots are going to fall, but they're getting a nice shot. And there you see one on the out-of-bounds play. Price with the finish. Yeah, that was the same out-of-bounds play. I think they just ran a possession to go. This time, Aubrey Price finishing, though. And lack in mental focus here from Faith Martin. At first, you don't succeed. A try, try, try again. You remember that song? Yeah. <laughs> and after that turnover, they're going to give it. Just outside the yeah, upper center bench. Working it down low, Sam Johnson. Good crossover, creates some separation in and out. Rebounded by Thompson. Drops it to Watley for the Winfrey, excuse me, can't get it to. But that was excellent hustle and recovery from the Raiders. Yeah, definitely did not lack any of that hustle. As Johnson about lets it go through her legs. Pushing ahead. Ooh, pretty, pretty straight up defense from Thompson there. It did, it did look that way. I think that may be a little bit, a little bit of a bailout call. She didn't even get the ball above her head, but she made a little bit of contact with the referees say. I won't harp on them too bad, Star now. Look at Seb Johnson's bucket just rattling in and out there for the timeout. Oh, the straight line out of bounds. Down on the low block. Jackson can't get it to go. Coming the other way is Afrocentric. Eight Mark, Mark with the ball. Look at this defense from Reynoldsburg. A lot of pressure from Reynoldsburg. Cam Grant can't shake her, dishes it over. Bowers from the top of the key for three. Big three point shot from Bowers. Janaya Bowers, the sophomore. Little giving a little full court defense to Johnson here. 10. 20 seconds remaining on the clock. And a 15. 
Rebound after Centric. We'll see what they do with it. Ten seconds to play. Cam Grant just takes it to the hole. Fouled by Sanaya Jackson, the sophomore. Just checking in, getting in. Some crucial minutes here at the end of the first quarter. Look at this move from Denia Bowers, a sophomore. The crossover looks off her defender. Ow! Cam Grant at the line. Misses the first. Second attempt is up, and it's good. Eight seconds remaining. We'll see if a Reynolds is going to take the last shot. Carter, Price, five seconds, three seconds. Aubrey Price at the buzzer. Oh, just short. Off the front of the iron. And at the end of one, Afrocentric Nubians lead Reynoldsburg 21 to 10. Here's a good look at that little inbounds play. Aubrey Price, nothing to it. Set up that line in just some simple motion. Screen for your teammate. See who gets open. Here's a good looking shot at Ohio Dominican University, the home of the Panthers. Love playing in this facility. You know, we've got six games today, six tomorrow, a great slate of high school girls basketball. For sure. And yeah, tomorrow, there we go. A look at what's already happened today. Mechanicsburg took care of Bishop Hartley. Waterford knocked out Worthington Christian. Pays Valley handled DeSales. And here we are, Reynolds going after Centric and two more coming up. Yeah, and please stay around for uh, Kettering Alter and Gahanna. Kettering Alter, another legacy program within the state of Ohio in girls basketball. And Upper Arlington and Sheridan, both teams are undefeated. So in our nightcap, this should be a really good game. Now, tomorrow's got a pretty good slate as well. Just five games tomorrow. Excuse me, not six as we get back to it on the inbounds. Nubians are going to start with the ball, bringing it up. That's Faith Martin, number three right there. Holyfield bringing that up, the pressure D. Let's see what they try to do here with the early second quarter. Looks like Reynoldsburg is in a man-to-man, -man yep. and they're switching off everything. Great move. Great spin move on the inside from Cameron Grant. And you'll notice Natalia Nelson getting a little breather, not on the floor for after center. It must be said, Reynoldsburg may take a little while to get themselves into this game. They had a really tough game against Dublin Kaufman last yep. night where nearly all of their starters played the entire game. And it looks like we have a five second call. Possession arrow to Afrocentric. So it just may take a little bit of time for Reynoldsburg to get settled. They had a double double. Yep. Yeah, that Dublin Kaufman squad is going to take everything out of you. So to have your hands again with Afrocentric today is Grant working the top of the key. Aubrey Price on our long run. And Maya Bowers. Long range. <laughs> the super sophomore. I think that's our new name. Let's see if Reynoldsburg has an answer. At this point, I think Simone Johnson is going to have to push the pace. She has the handle to get the ball to the basket, but they're going to need something going to the basket and somebody to finish. And I think that has to be Johnson. Aubrey Price here on the right wing. And another one, five second call. No, oh, excuse oh, me, a, a timeout. timeout. Looks like it's just a quick 30 second timeout. Yeah, and then Reynolds. this Reynoldsburg coat. Oh, now we're facing Afrocentric. You see Janisha Anderson in the middle, handling business as always. And one of the cool things about this matchup, we have two central, former Central Ohio basketball players. Janisha Anderson with the Beach Crop. She was also part of this Afrocentric leg legacy. Arshay Dotson, a Mifflin graduate. And I'll save 
her accolades for a little bit later. Okay. She's probably one of two people here who has a really, really long resume. The other one happens to be Katie Smith. She's an assistant coach for Upper Arlington. So okay. we'll see. We have a couple legends in the building. And that's what makes Candace Allen good at her job. You know all this stuff. You just spit it. And it's gotta, a good. I gotta make Candace Parker proud. <laughs> And it's a good educate, you know, good education for me, you know. Only been in the area a couple years. Granted, my mom is an Upper Arlington graduate. She wasn't a hooper, but no. There's Nubians up 16. With still six to play here in the second quarter. Janaya Bowers, long range Bowers. Good ball movement from the Nubians. Really making Reynoldsburg work on the defensive end. Elevates, but can't get it to fall as Sam Thompson. And you can just see the active hands and the length by Afrocentric is just making it hard to get up any kind of shot. Right, and I can appreciate the aggressive, aggressiveness from Holyfield. She was trying to make something happen. When you can't get any field goals to the basket, like I said, this defense has been stifling. At least try to initiate some kind of contact if she was able to get in there and draw the foul. At the line, shooting to Simone Holyfield, the senior. This is her first one, and as you, yeah, you saw there on the replay, it was just a good look. That Afrocentric defense. She gets ready for the second. Got in it. and out. Yep. Got to knock down those free throws, especially when things are going offensively. Those are usually points left on the board. Yep, all things black and purple here. Early on in game number three from the battle of the 6-1-4. Oh, great pass. Oh, got to finish that. Little long, tough shot from that angle. Aubrey Price drives, spins, elevates. Oh, transition game from the Nubians here. They got a car that pokes it away. And called for the travel there. Just a little out of control. But I like the effort. I, you're reading my mind. Like, you have to get something going, especially offensively. I'm not for sure if Reynolds Park has been able to score in this quarter as of yet. They have to get something going. And at least, if you're going to put your head down, go to the basket and get fouled. So I like the intention. The execution just has to be a little better. And here comes Denia McDonald back to the board. Yeah, scoreless is Reynoldsburg here in the second quarter. It was 20 to 10. Ooh, tough hands there. Carter just can't come away with it, and I think she's going to get called on the foul. Trying to make up for that play. That was a good look. You'll see just the swipe. Yeah, it just came down. Yeah, missed on the free throw there. Yeah, they up 20 to 10 at the end of the first quarter. Reynolds Brick's got to get something going. And I don't know if, yeah, more pace or less pace is maybe slow it down and try and they're, Hammer out, it's hard though. It is hard, and that's been the MO of Reynolds Park this season. They're, they're go, 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 go. They press the gas. So I would hate to tell a team not to be who they are. It's just when it's not working, you have to find something else. There has to be an adjustment. Um, and I think playing yesterday may have some kind of effect. Um, a lot of bunnies are being left on the board as well. That was another layup. Um, Simon Johnson is able to get to the free throw line, but just a little off on the field goal attempt. They just have to get something so to get a point on the board. Normally, if you get a free throw, you get a basket, then the floodgates are open, but it's been a minute since they scores. At the line. Sam Johnson, there's one. Knocks it in, 28 to 11. 
Maybe this will this will open those floodgates. Seeing a couple go in. There we oh, go. All around the basket. All right, half court set. Little kick and cut through. These are all out at the perimeter. And yeah, can't have those kind of fouls when you're trailing 16, 25 feet from the basket. Yeah, especially with this, again, the new rule, um, the closer you get to five, that's one thing Reynoldsburg doesn't need is Afrocentric at the line shoot yep. two free throws with the, the clock stop. Yep, and fouls on number five, Saman Johnson, that's her first. Two fouls for each team, so not anywhere near that bonus yet. On the trigger, Cam Grant, just a little long. Simon Johnson drives, great Euro step, and finish. Simon Johnson has tremendous, tremendous handle. And if she can continue to do that and get deep in the basket, I don't think they have a player on Epicenter who can stop her one-on-one. -on -one. So maybe that's the thing, set her a pick, let her go off either side and get to the basket as quickly as she can, because she has the handle to do so. Yeah, quick four points there from Simon Johnson, and that'll earn a timeout from Afrocentric. And there you see her here on the replay. Simon Johnson guarded by Little, able to jump stop and able to finish. Yeah, good look there. She just kind of diced right through. 340 remaining. Half a center cheerleaders causing a ruckus on the far side. <laughs> but yeah, I see a lot of purple and black. You know, Reynoldsburg and Afrocentric oh, in the for building. Sure. It's purple against purple. Mm -hmm. And both both fan bases travel pretty well. As we are just about coming out of the timeout here. Got a lot of ground to make up here with just 340 left in the second. We'll see if Reynoldsburg can trim that lead down. Maybe get into single digits going into half. All right, 25 Brown checking on for Afrocentric. The sophomore getting a little action in. Close out the half. Winfrey with the ball, working up the top. Kicks it over to Bowers. I think that's a little out of her range, but. Oh. Good hands from Price. Can't get her. Johnson can't get it though. Kicked out of bounds by Malia Collins. I apologize for the sound effects, but sometimes the move, you know, she hit her on a quick back cut. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little pre presumptive on the finish though. <laughs> yep, got a good hand in there. Bowers takes it out of bounds, finds Winfrey out at the volleyball line. Directing traffic. Takes the screen, goes the other way. Nice hands by McDonald. Winfrey jumps and shoots. On the rebound, Brown. Strong hands. Javiana Brown. And the sophomore getting some minutes and getting some points on the board. And an offensive foul call. Again, that's what happens when you're down and you try to press just a little bit. But again, I appreciate the effort. They're trying to initiate something on the offensive end. Um, just maybe not that aggressive. And that for Cedric with the ball. Arnoldsburg still in that man defense. Can't finish, Cam Grant. Kind of way off the mark there. A little isolation offense. All right, Malaya Collins checks out. Looks like Carter's back on. Bowers, pump fake spins, hands it off to Brown. Oh, she was getting ready to shoot that thing. <laughs> Bowers from Wadey. 
Boarded by McDonald. If Reynoldsburg can find an answer. McDonald drives inside just out of the hands, but fielded by Holyfield. Good block down low by Brown. Faith Martin drives, can't finish. Look up, look up. There you go. Good feet, footwork by McDonald. Way to run the way to run the floor by Reynoldsburg. Afrocentric, nice easy answers. Javiana Brown on the easy back cut. I think that was Cam Grant. She's been doing some damage this afternoon. I think you're just seeing a little bit more energy from this Afrocentric team. Grant out at the volleyball line. And if I was Grant, hey, go ahead and try to get a third foul on Denia McDonald. She takes on two of them, just right over the top, flexing a little bit. Cam Grant getting buckets. Take it to the basket. Tough defense there, Afrocentric on the fast break. All alone, Bowers lays it in. A great pass. Good hand. Better block. Great fast break bucket by Cam Grant and the Afrocentric Nubians. The little three lady weave on the way down. You see it push it up the middle. Here we go left side. Skip pass right up the middle. And if our count is right, that is 14 first half points for Cam Grant, who's having herself an afternoon. At the line, Ooh, in and out. And jump ball called. Underneath, possession arrow goes to Reynoldsburg. Five seconds. Three. At the buzzer, oh, can't get it off as Claiborne. She went to drive instead of shooting it up. Well, that'll do it for the first half here of game number four as the Afrocentric Nubians lead the Reynoldsburg Lady Pirates. 38 to 16, down 22. Ladies in black getting it done. We're going to step aside for about nine minutes here at halftime. We will be back on the Yamo Sports Network. When the local soccer team brought me to town, I needed a great vehicle to get to practice and my games. The champions at Buckeye treated me like family. That's how well, that's I Buckeye. I'm
I'm Doug Hume, Executive Director of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. For more than 115 years, the OHSAA has promoted school sports as an important part of the students' education experience. Interscholastic athletes teach participants lifelong lessons, hard work, teamwork, and self-discipline, along with sportsmanship, integrity, getting along with others, and overcoming the One thing the pandemic has taught us is that being on a team with our friends is more important than ever before. So as you continue your journey in athletics, remember the importance of also working hard in class. Always give your best, never give up, and have fun while you're doing it. As an Ohio native and former athlete, we've only been seeing lessons myself. I encourage our young people to focus on your academics so that you can continue the privilege of participating in your class. After all, the lessons that school sports teaches today will prepare you for the wins and losses in life tomorrow. Education is the key to life success. Athletics. Our student athletes are going pro at being coachable, a good student, responsible, attentive, respectful. I'm going pro at being a good student, a good student, a good student, responsible. I'm going pro at being a good student, a good student, a good student. Let's go pro at respect the game. Respect the game. Respect the game. When the local soccer team brought me to town, I needed a great vehicle to get to practice and my game. The champions at Buckeye treated me like family. That's how I Buckeye. The OHSAA is to serve our members' schools and enrich interscholastic opportunities for students. To run quality postseason tournaments. To work with the bylaws that our members' schools have voted into us. To support our officials. That's our mission every day at the Ohio High School Athletic Association. To serve. To serve. To serve. To serve. Hi, I'm Doug Hughes, Executive Director of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. For more than 115 years, the OHSAA has promoted school sports as an important part of the students' education experience. Interscholastic athletics teach participants lifelong lessons of hard work, teamwork, and self-discipline, along with sportsmanship, integrity, getting along with others, and overcoming adversity. One thing the pandemic has taught us is that being on a team with our friends is more important than ever. So you continue your journey in athletics. Remember the importance of also working hard in the classroom. Always give your best, never give up, and have fun while you're doing it. As an Ohio native and former athlete who learned these same lessons myself, I encourage our young people to focus on your academics so that you can continue the privilege of participating in your team. After all, the lessons that school sports teach us today will prepare you for the wins and losses in life tomorrow. Education is the key to life success. At the Ohio High School Athletic Association, our student athletes are going pro at being coachable, a good student, responsible, and respectful. I'm going pro at being a good student, a good student, a good student, responsible. I'm going pro at being coachable, a good student, dependable, a good teammate, representing my school.
I'm a good student. A good student. Responsible. Let's go pro at respecting the game. Respect 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 the game. How do you book I? We work at it all the time. When the local soccer team brought me to town, I needed a great vehicle to get to practice and my games. The champions at Buckeye treated me like family. That's how I Buckeye. Never guess what we're doing to the Baconator. We're putting a it- A pretzel burn on the Baconator. Catherine, you seeing this? Posters everywhere. What? The Baconator you love with a new pretzel twist. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new Pretzel Baconator. Our mission at the OHSAA is to serve our member schools and enrich interscholastic opportunities for students. To run quality postseason tournaments to work with the bylaws that our member schools have voted into place. To support our officials. That's our mission every day at the Ohio High School Athletic Association. To serve. To serve. To serve. Hi, I'm Doug Gute, Executive Director of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. For more than 115 years, the OHSAA has promoted school sports as an important part of the student's educational experience. Interscholastic athletics teach participants lifelong lessons of hard work, teamwork, and self-discipline, along with sportsmanship, integrity, getting along with others, and overcoming adversity. One thing the pandemic has taught us is that being on a team with our friends is more important than ever before. So as you continue your journey in athletics, remember the importance of also working hard in the classroom. Always give your best, never give up, and have fun while you're doing it. As an Ohio native and former athlete who learned these same lessons myself, I encourage our young people to focus on your academics so that you can continue the privilege of participating on your team. After all, the lessons that school sports teach us today will prepare you for the wins and losses in life tomorrow. Education is the key to life successes. At the Ohio High School Athletic Association, our student athletes are going pro at being coachable, a good student, responsible, dependable, respectful. I'm going pro at being a good student, a good student, a good teammate, responsible. I'm going pro at being coachable, a good student, dependable, a good teammate. Representing my school. I'm going pro at being a good student. A good student. Responsible. Let's go pro at respecting the game. Respect 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 the game. How do you book guys? Oh, welcome back, everybody. We are at the ba girls' battle in the 614 at Ohio Dominican University here in the capital city of Columbus, Ohio. We have the Afrocentric Nubians who are leading 38 against the Reynoldsburg Lady Raiders to 16. It was an exciting first half. Ryan, but Afrocentric just on a different level starting out. Dominant performance. We'll see what the Berg is going to do here in the second half as the Nubians pick up right where they left off. So Sam Thompson getting on the inside. Natalia Nelson sat out most of that second quarter, so she's going to be ready to go. Off the mark is McDonald. Nice hit, nice way to tow the line by Grant. And it's full steam ahead for the Lady Nubians. 
right on cue to Taya Nelson. It's just a different pace starting off. The score is 42-16. Like Ryan just said, Nelson, who was sitting out half the, even probably more than half the first, um, more than first half is just come off the bench. What kind of luxury is that? You can sit one of your best players for a quarter and a half and still build an almost 25-30 point lead. Yeah. Nice work there from Aubrey Price. There got to be a foul on Nelson trying to get a full court steal. But yeah, you'll see the scoreboard there on your screen is wrong. It is 42 to 18. They're just missing a one. Um, we'll see if they can get that. The board operator. But no worries. Call it out in the meantime. Either way, 42. There you go. 42 to 18 here in the building. Good handles from Natalia Nelson. Just blowing by two defenders. He's swinging around up top. Cam Grant working the high post wants the pass. Takes it to the rim, can't get that one to go. Ordered by Thompson. Looks like the foul is on number three. That's Leona Carter. And I think in games like this, especially with a lead like this, Afrocentric is just going to keep working on their chemistry and their toughness. You see, although they're up, up big here in the second half, they're still out there working. They're getting their hands on nearly every rebound, every loose ball. They've already gotten maybe two turnovers to start off this half. So, and even aggressive fouls. So this team, they know their expectation. Um, but the things, you know, always continually working on. The coach said, never a loss, always a lesson. And in a win, I don't know what the analogy is. After that, you just keep going and keep getting better. So there are other aspects of the game they're continually to work on. Good help side defense from Natalia Nelson. Aubrey Price right into the chest. Then you get the call, fouls on 2-4. That's Cam Grant. They're all kind of just looking around, shaking their heads. And yeah, we see the replay here. She took all the foul right in the face. Yeah, just kind of Nelson's arm just got her. Either way, they get the call at the line. Miss Price makes her first. Shooting the second. As you can see, Cam Grant. And Sam Thompson down on the bottom. And you see Reynoldsburg putting on their press, trying to stop any of the momentum, but Afrocentric just breaks it on the end one. Yeah, gets by and then has a mismatch down below. You've got the ball on one side and defenders chasing. And you can see just kind of speed handles everything. Bowers, good vision. And good work by Cam Grant to run the backside. And you saw the foul there on Sinai Jackson, number 11. The sophomore, that should be her second. And we're already at four fouls for Reynoldsburg here in the third quarter, so one more. And that'll move them into the bonus. Yeah, and then you've got the Nubian shooting free throws. And yeah, Nubians with a little press of their own there. Coming up short, Holyfield. Nothing on the call. Just off the leg. Yeah, that was good work from Carter. A little help side defense, kind of flash to that sideline and kick it out of bounds off her thigh. Bowers inbounds, Nelson. Little back to Nelson. Drive a little shove off. Nothing. Good board by Claiborne. Just a little short, just a little bit more lift on that shot, and it's there every time for Nelson. Active hands, but no call there. As you hear the Reynoldsburg fans cheering for a foul on the play. Afrocentric, drive and pop. Thompson off the mark, good rebound, Cam Grant. Just doing it all. 
Yeah, Cam Grant has been nearly unstoppable this game. Any basket that she's getting in between those two boxes is a go. She has to be almost 100% from down there. Even pressure on the inbounds, hand away. Good recovery, Aubrey Price. See if Reynolds can get anything here on the offensive end. A lot of isolation ball, drive and shoot. And Cam Grant, excellent help side defense. And Natalia Nelson showcasing the handling skills. And here we go again, Cam what Grant. Pass. Like I said, she's doing it all. Good vision. She saw the help side defense in her face, so she just found the teammate. Good work by Samira Thompson, too, to show and find the gap. It's Reynoldsburg. I thought we were going to get a timeout. Deep foul on Shania Little there. A little over aggressive. Substitutions, Nelson. And yeah, a little checking out for the Nubians as we get back in. Number one, Ashton Winfrey, the senior. And number three, Faith Martin, the junior. Nice drive, just can't finish. Playboard and Winfrey tied up down below. They still down there playing hard. You like to see it. The score doesn't matter. That's right. Yeah, and... Claiborne's got like six inches on Winfrey, and Winfrey was down there just hanging with her. Oh, for sure. Great inbound pass. Good set there by the Lady Raiders. Gotta stop Cam Grant. Good stop by Reynoldsburg. Let's see if they can make it two in a row. Aubrey Price, just isolation still. Not setting up any offense. It's just driving, put up a tough shot. Cameron Grant just going to go coast to coast. And Aubrey Price drops that left hand and fouls her on the shot. At some point, though, you are going to have to stop the ball. It was just an open lane from end to end. You see Cam Grant here on the replay. There's just nobody stopping the ball. At the last minute, you see Simon Johnson try to step in and then hit her on the arm. That's not the kind of defense you want to see. The end one attempt is good. Cameron Grant, three-point play. As the Nubians are now up 30, halfway through the third. Here we go, Simon Johnson again. Trying to facilitate some offense. Holyfield's going to drive. A little underhanded. Kind of finger roll from five feet out. That's a tough shot. But she gets the call. She'll get to the line. For sure. One thing about Holyfield, though, I will say she's had some success getting to the basket. Um, every time she does it, I get a little nervous because there's a bunch of tall trees down there. But she's been able to draw some fouls. And knocks in her first free throw. Yeah, you mentioned it. Mafrocentric definitely with some height advantage. And it's just active hands anyway. They keep them up. Johnson at the line. Holy field box and ball. And you see Villensburg putting on the press, but it needs to be a little bit more active to disrupt Afrocentric. Nelson traps herself in the corner. Luckily, it's bailed out. It's Johnson that takes it to the side. And I think this would be a good time to talk about the Reynoldsburg Raiders head coach, Marche Dotson. This is her first year that you see her on the camera. Her first year as head coach, she's taken over for Jack Pertel, who was at the school for 21 years and led them to a state championship in 2022. Marche Dotson was obviously a star at Columbus Mifflin High School as the two of you here, one of the cheerleaders just flipping all the way down the floor. But the thing, big thing about Marche Dotson, she was a four-year starter at the University of Florida and a two-time All-SEC first team player. And if you think about 
um, the time that she was there. She was first team All SEC with Candace Parker, Sylvia Fowles, Simone Augustus. So you're looking at a bona fide legend. And in 2019, she was inducted into the SEC Legends group. So there is Marche Dotson. She did lead um, the Columbus Mifflin Punchers to a state title appearance her freshman year. And it's twice led them to deep playoff runs. So a Columbus legend in Marche Dotson. I did ask both coaches, what was it like playing against each other? And that's kind of how they described it. It's full circle. It's like they're lining up, playing against each other, and how representation obviously matters with two Columbus graduates now leading two high school girls team to great success. So you have one who is the head of a, a dominant program and another who's up and coming in her first year who obviously has an incredibly bright future. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of good basketball for years to come here between these two squads. It's a good history lesson. Thanks, Candace. Reynoldsburg looking for a little life. Johnson again. Just Cam Grant's just kind of too much for her down low. Yeah, and I will say there was just a lot of layups left on the rim for the Raiders this entire game. But like you said, Cam Grant, the hands, the length, the activity, Afrocentric has not made it easy at all. All right, ball out underneath. Maybe the Nubians, that's Winfrey. Tossing it into Nelson. Holyfield. Just a little overreach there. Slaps her on the way up. Let's see, the senior is going to get called for. That's just her first foul. Nelson at the line. This is her first. And that is five. That's the fifth foul on Reynoldsburg. She was shooting anyway. But moving forward, they will be in the bonus. Rattles that one in. Yeah, look to see continued success from her at the next level. Cam Grant, I thought she was going to knock that one away. Claiborne comes away with it. Nice spin move by the Lady Raider down the knee, going to the line. Yeah, and Taylor Claiborne, coincidentally, was on Afrocentric's team last year. So she is a state champion as well, but made the move over to Reynoldsburg. And there you see her at the line. When she's aggressive down in the post, she's obviously one of the tallest players out there on the floor. It could be a benefit to the Raiders moving forward towards the rest of the season if she's able to get down there and get some putbacks early and, and draw some fouls. That's, that's a big one. Misses her first one there. Good look at Miss Claiborne. Knocks in the second. Good form there. All right, hovering right around that 28-point lead. Yeah, Grant checks out. Samara Thompson checks back in. Miss Martin bringing it up. Met by Johnson at half court. More patient offense from the Nubians here. Nelson working it. Contact there from Claiborne. You can see shutting her down on the shot as he gets a look at it. Yeah, that's just a savvy move from a player who knows how to draw his fouls. Go in, initiate the contact, take the pressure, maybe fall on the ground a little bit, but it's all just experience and being able to get to the basket. Nelson knocks in her first free throw. At the line shooting her second. Up and good. Full court defense from Miss Winfrey. Just trying to make it a little more difficult on Johnson. And once again, the up and under trying to do maybe a little bit too much on her own. She's got to get her teammates involved. For sure, and one thing, Ashton Winfrey's, Winfrey's defense, she called it out earlier, that will tire you out over the course of a game. She's just all in her face, in her space, everything. Um, so a tremendous performance from her on the defensive end. And there's Nelson once again. 
Yeah, nobody's stepping into the lane for the Lady Raiders. You see some lazy hands swatting at it as we get inside the two minute mark. Let's see if Aubrey Price. That's a night Jackson steps inside and lays it in for two. Just sprinting the floor goes Afrocentric and Shawnee Little putting on a burst of speed. Yes, I appreciate not giving up on the play, but that's just textbook basketball. As soon as the ball is scored, get it out the basket, and they're off and running. At the line, Shawnee Little knocks in her first, and that just comes down to identity. That's who they are. It's just, it's in their blood. If they're up 30 or down 30, I'm sure they... Play the exact same way. Yep. I, I don't think this squad has ever been down 30, but <laughs> it's just a little outside. I like it though. Lady Raiders trying to push it up, but Deanna Carter can't get it. Turns it over. Going to be Nubian ball coming the other way. And you see him now just lightly putting on some pressure, but there's Afrocentric just at a different speed. And you see the flex from Ashton Winfrey. At this point, it's it's just the legacy of the program that's just been embedded into all the players in their DNA. You see how much they're up, and they're still playing at the same space, the same pace, at the same speed, the same intensity. Um, getting to the basket at will, seeing open lanes, pushing the ball. Uh, but they know in order to keep up reputation and all the pressure that they have. Then you see Nelson again on the rebound. Um, it just, they just built different. What a pass. Wow. Inside. Smooth with it. I don't I don't know if they need a new new slogan, but that's that's the lady Nubians. They're built different. And look at them, another turnover. A little tie up there with the feet. Collins gets Winfrey. Yeah, good look at the replay of the battling down low. Sticking with it. Look at this pass. And yeah, just kind of Bates Reynoldsburg. They all fall out and cover their squad and just dips behind into those open zones. Ashton Winfrey knocks her first one down. The line shooting her second. It's good. Running clock here. Ten seconds left. Let's see if Reynoldsburg is going to get up a shot. Sam Johnson. Three seconds. Inside kick. Up. Miss Jackson off the mark at the horn. And that'll do it for the end of the third quarter. Afrocentric in a big way here. 65 to 27 over the Reynoldsburg. Lady Raiders, and we'll be back in just a moment for the fourth quarter here on the Elmo Sports Network. When the local soccer team brought me to town, I needed a great vehicle to get to practice and my games. The champions at Buckeye treated me like family. That's how I Buckeye. Uh, 
out waiting for the Lady Raiders. It's all smiles from the girls in black. Good inside find. Aubrey Price finishes. Aubrey Price has had a really good offensive game and getting some buckets that has, has been hard to come by. Winfrey drives. There's some quick hands from Price. Winfrey wanted the end one. I think the referees know at this point, yeah, it, he can swallow the whistle just as well. Maybe not on that one. Yeah, full. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't hit the receiver coming across the middle of the field like that, as they would say. On a rare NFL Saturday, actually, last I saw the. You know what? That's what I was wondering. Why was the NFL playing today? Like, it's not the playoffs, right? No, they do that at the end of the year, though. They start once college football is done officially for the Saturdays. Oh. They start to split it up a little bit. Um, but I know the Bengals were going into overtime right about when this started. I apologize to all the football fans <laughs> out there. If it's not on Sunday or the wild card, I don't know. It's all Lady Basketball today. They get it ahead Ooh. nice and easy. Johnny Little. Yeah, for Centric extends their lead to 40. Yeah, at this time, I think the Reynoldsburg Raiders just need to work through their offensive progressions. And I appreciate Samad Johnson being aggressive, but this is the time just to work on some things. Fast break, Natalia Nelson. Yep, got to make it, you know, respectable. Finish out the fourth quarter in a good way. We're going to have it out underneath. Simon Johnson for Reynoldsburg. Foul was on Janiah Bowers. That's her first. Sanaya Jackson. Oh, she had the shot. Great defense from Nelson. She had the shot on the initial one, but she pulled it back down. Denai Bowers, easy layup. Yeah, McDonald's just got to take that straight up. Yeah. Her first move was the one to shoot. Way short. Don't know if it was tipped. Rebounded by Brown. Bowers on the rebound. Up ahead, Winfrey. Corrals it back to Bowers. Nice little one foot jumper. And it looks like it's a full timeout taken by Reynolds You see right that there. first move, that was the second move, but on her first move and she got it, she should have took it up. But there you see Afrocentric off and running. Jemiah Bauer is the super sophomore with the finish. Yep, just that one extra move. Gives the defense a little bit more time to recover or help and get over there. Yeah, those Nubian cheerleaders, they're feeling it for sure. The team up 46. It's going to be a good Saturday night for the girls from Afrocentric. just doing some addition in my head. If, if my stats mirror the official stats, it looked like Cam Graham maybe up to 22 points. But we'll see officially what that number is once the game is over. But she's had a tremendous afternoon. Yeah, doing it all. Rebounds, assists. Getting it done on the defensive end as well. Five oh seven to play. Once again, Ryan Dietrich and Candace Allen proudly broadcasting on the Alamo Sports Network. Nice move by Aubrey Price. Can't get it to drop though. Nothing falling for the Lady Raiders. Love the move, but that just takes some work once she gets settled and get those feet set off of her spin that ball's going to go in every time but great aggressive move
patient offense from the Nubians as it gets kicked out of bounds by Faith Martin. And you can see her kind of frustrated right there. Sam Johnson bringing it up. Good crossover, but my goodness. And Natalia Nelson's not sure how that's off of her, but she's going to live with it. Again, Holyfield gets to, she penetrates extraordinarily well, but at some point she's just going to have to know how to get that shot up over the trees down there. And there's Denia McDonald with the football. Yep, yeah, attack and kick her. No, attack, keep it through. Or get a some floater. Other, right. But yep, got to yeah, got to improve her game and you know come try some different things. Working on the defensive end, Winfrey leans into her a little bit. But Johnson's getting called for the foul. Yeah, I'm not for sure where the foul is, especially if the offensive player puts their forearm in the belly. But listen, I, I'm I'm hard pressed to critique somebody doing a job I wouldn't want to do, and that is an official. And that's just the third foul on Savon Johnson. And a shimmy shake from Bowers lets it rip from three. Run by Johnson again. Good find, Aubrey Price left wing. It's good. All right, two and a half minutes remaining here in the game. Nubians up 41. Jemai Bowers still doing her thing. Good rebound by the sophomore Brown. And she goes to the ground but gets the call. There you see on the break there's Simone Johnson. You'll see her dish it out to Aubrey Price who gets her feet set. Knocks down the three. Javion Brown knocks in her first one. Hits them both. Nice little floater from Price there in the lane. Nelson's still banging around for some boards. Brown, but stripped away by Carter. And she goes up for the 15-footer, but gets fouled. And I appreciate the Raiders still out here working. You see on the replay here, there's a loose ball. Both teams going for it. And then you can see the sophomore here able to draw the foul. Still out here competing, and that's what you want. Deanna Carter at the line, misses her first one. Knocks in the second, though. Right, after Centric bringing the ball up. Nelson, Great little pass. give and go. Taya Nelson. Nelson. Working off the assist from Shawnee Little. From Shawnee Little. Great crossover. And Johnson gets fouled on the play. So I think that was on Brown. Yep. Second foul on Brown as you see Johnson. Carter elevates but can't get to go. McDonald rebound, kick out. Aubrey Price oh. at the horn. No good, and that'll do it, folks, as it's all Afrocentric here in game number four this afternoon from ODU. Lady Nubians run away with this one, 79 to 35, and that'll do it for Ryan Dietrich and Candace Allen. We will be back here in about 14 minutes for our next game, so please stay tuned, folks. Once again, we've got Gahanna and Kettering Alter coming up, so we'll see you folks in a short 10 minutes. I'm here with our solid brick player of the game, Cameron Grant. 
Can you just tell me in a showcase like this, you're in a collegiate floor, what's the message from your coach to you to come out and play the way you did? Just to be dogs and always like improve our will and show that we don't come to play, you know? Like we come to get everything done and it is what it is. Like we know who we are, so stand on that. You said you know who you are. Afrocentric has like just the legacy, the championship. You guys won last year. Unfortunately, you're out. What kind of mission are you on this season to get back to, to where you guys were? I just honestly, my senior year, I want to leave like the best reputation for myself that I can. So as you see in every game, I'm just trying to work my hardest and give my all so everybody see that I'm not coming to play. Like I'm coming to show what I have and what I've been having. I just haven't been here. So this is my year. This is your year. This is just the final question. What can you say about your teammates as well? Natalia Nelson had a big game, but one of the players we talked about on the broadcast was Ashton Winfrey's defense, especially on the opposing team's uh, point guards. And I Bowers had a big game as well. But can you just talk about your teammates and how they all just came to play? You guys had a really big win. Um, me and my teammates honestly go through a lot in practice. So for us to come out here every game and just do what we do, like Ashton with the defense and Natalia with the buckets, it just – it shows a lot about our character because we always come to play no matter what. So it's just good to see them always giving their all, working hard, and beating people like we used to doing, you know? Like Keeping the legacy alive. I love it. This is our solid brick player of the game, Kevin Grant. I am Candace Allen. Thank you very much.